Hello. Uh, today's lesson is um, a brief breakdown of some of the nuts and bolts behind um, optimization, which is one of the fundamental applications of differential calculus. Um, optimization is very similar mathematically to a process that we've done recently, which is um, finding and classifying stationary points. So we can find a stationary point, indicate that it's a local maximum. Well, that's very similar to what we're doing here. There's one exception. Um, they're saying the maximum and minimum values of the function, usually when they ask and phrase in that specific way, there will be a specific interval over which the function is defined. In this case, there's a, a cubic function defined from negative 2 to 5 inclusive. When looking for maximum and minimum values, we have to not only consider where the stationary points are, because those are potential local maxima or local minima, but we must also examine what's happening at the end point because it's possible that uh, f of 5, for example, is higher than the local maximum found from the stationary point. So essentially, we have to do two different types of analysis, one for the end points and the other for any stationary points that might exist in between. So, simply, uh, this is a polynomial, easy to differentiate using the power rule. So uh, the derivative is 3x squared minus 9. Isn't that convenient? Um, the second derivative is going to be 6x. So we'll be 6x full with this problem for sure. Um, now I'm going to use the second derivative um, as a way of helping determine if there's a local maximum or minimum in an area. Um, so I'll explain that briefly, and I'm sure you should probably already anticipate how that works. But here we go. To find stationary points, I find where the derivative is equal to 0. The derivative is equal to 0 when 3x squared minus 9 equals 0, and uh, that means x could be at plus or minus the square root of 3. Now, the second derivative at positive square root of 3 is 6 square root of 3, which is positive. So what we know is the graph is going to be concave up, and if a graph is concave up, then we have a minimum value at x equals square root of 3. Now, I still have to put square root of 3 back into the function to find out what that minimum value is, uh, but I know the minimum locally occurs at square root of 3. Similarly, at negative square root of 3, we get a negative value. The graph is concave down, which means there's a maximum at neg x equals negative 3. Negative square root of 3, sorry. Now, uh, I actually uh, factored my given function because I knew that I have square root of 3 as my x value so um, I was just simplifying ahead of time um, when I put in square root of 3 for x I get negative 6 square root of 3 and when I put in negative square root of 3 for x I get 6 square root of 3 now hopefully what you're seeing here is a form of symmetry and this is in fact um, odd symmetry which if you go back and review you can prove um, if you don't remember how you should probably look it up if you're one of those IB students, it's going to be something you're going to have to know um, permanently. <laughs> anyway, back to this work, I have two different y values. There's negative 6 square root of 3, there's positive 6 square root of 3, which means we have two points that are stationary that are locally their highest or lowest points. Now all I have to do is evaluate the function at x equals negative 2 and at x equals 5 and I did that mentally and I got 80 and 10. Now negative 6 times the square root of 3 hopefully you can uh, um, estimate that or use a calculator but that's clearly going to be um, deeper or lower than negative or ne lower than 10 so this is obviously the lowest point um, that you can get because the end point is at 10 the graph then is heading um, to a maximum at 6 square root of 3, then it's turning around, heading to a local minimum at negative square root of 6 square root of 3, and then it heads all the way back up and stops at 80. So the minimum point happens to be one of the stationary points I found using my calculus. The maximum point happens to be um, the end point, 580. So to answer the question, there's a minimum value, a maximum value 80, and a minimum value approximately negative 10 point. Three, nine. Confirm that by putting in a Desmos, and uh, keep in mind, uh, when you enter into Desmos, you can actually use the, uh, the curly brackets and put in the restricted domain, and then uh, Desmos will only graph the portion of the function that matters, and you can see the minimum occurs, or the maximum occurs, um, just slightly above the end point, 
The minimum occurs obviously all by itself, and the maximum here is at the other endpoint. So, hope you find this helpful, and uh, um, we'll be doing plenty of this practice for the next couple of days. So, thanks for watching. Have a good day.